We are blessed in so many ways here. Uh, and one of the ways we're blessed is we get some of the, the, the finest Christian leaders from the world come here. And you know, I before uh, COVID-19, when they still let me get on planes without uh, doing my Darth Vader look-alike, um, I used to travel a lot all over the world. And uh, people assumed that we had this huge mega church. And, and, and I said, oh, no, we, we have you know, a few hundred people. And we just serve Jesus, get it on. And uh, I don't know how many times I've heard people say, how do you connect with all these amazing people all over the world? And my answer to that is, God helps us supernaturally. Uh, and one of the things he's really blessed us with is Bulbir and Katrina Sukar. And uh, they have lots of influence in one of our, uh, our favorite nations. Is it okay to have favorite nations? I, anyway, we, we do more in India than any other nation. It's a wonderful place, very spiritual people, very hungry for the gospel. And God is raising up great leaders uh, for this, uh, this present day move of God from India. And so, uh, Balbir and Katrina are always saying, hey, you know, our friends are gonna be in town and, and they've really blessed this church. So, uh, Vikram and Ritu are two of those people um, and we are honored to have you here. Thank you so much for coming. They have a, a huge international ministry. They do ministry out of uh, uh, India, but in, in uh, over 30 nations, they're disciplers, and uh, again, it's an honor to have you here. So let's welcome Vikram as he comes to share the word of the Lord with us. Good morning. Uh, I really want to thank God for this opportunity. It's such an honor for me to share this pulpit because many mighty men of, and women of God, they have stood here, preached the gospel, shared the word, shared the heart of God. It's such a blessing for me. Thank you so much, Pastor, and thanks to Pastor Balbir and Sister Katrina. And uh, they brought us here. God made a way for us. And uh, we thank God for that. And uh, they were in India a couple of years back. I think it was in 2009. We had a wonderful time with them. The way we met was a miracle of God. And uh, it was very divine. Somehow they texted someone, inviting them for meeting because Pastor Day was going to be there ministering. So I received that text. And uh, anyway, that place was so far from my town. And I was not going to go there. But I felt in my heart... Lord saying, you must go. So I spoke with my, my wife. I said, we are very busy on that day, but let's go because I, I sense very strongly God asking me to go. So now here we are. We thank God for that. And Pastor Balbir and Katrina, they were there uh, with our leaders. We had a wonderful time and uh, many people were blessed. So this church is really a great blessing. So even, uh, you know, I want to welcome you back and even Pastor Dave and all the church. We, uh, we may not have big house, but we have big heart <laughs> and we will arrange it somehow. So really thank God for that. Uh, yesterday I was sharing about how God touched my life and how I came to know about the love of Jesus, not only knowing it, but experiencing it in my life. I, I, I came to a place where really I allowed God to heal and touch me. And God really touched my heart and transformed my life. I'm not standing here because I have, I'm very educated or I have a, you know, a lot of study background or something that I have done. I'm only standing here. It's simply the grace of God and love of Christ Jesus that I came to know and that raised me up to be what my heavenly father wants me to be. Amen. God has a plan for every one of you. He has chosen the weak, weak vessels, weak things of the world, and foolish things of the world. 
And uh, that's what he has done. I was such a foolish guy. <laughs> made so many mistakes, but God is good. And that is how, you know, he defeats the enemy. The resurrection power of Christ is working in each and every one of you. The desire of Paul was, he said, I want to know the, the resurrection power. I want, it, I want to know that, what that power is that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. What is that power that raised Lazarus from the dead? What is that power that created this universe? He wanted to know the power of God. And that's why his ministry was so divine and so powerful and so impacting because he had the revelation of what is that power, who his heavenly father is, who is that Christ Jesus, who is Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And that same Holy Spirit is raised, able to raise people from their brokenness, from what they are going through in their lives. I got saved in the year 2002. I am from a Sikh family background. And no one, I was the first one in my family to know about Jesus. I never heard about him. Though maybe, in the, maybe when I was a child, I maybe watched some movie during Christmas program, but uh, during the Christmas days on TV. But, you know, for me, that was just a story, nothing more than that. So I was the first one. I received Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior in year 2002. I moved to Scotland to get settled in that nation. And, um, and after a few months, one of my friends invited me to the church. My going to church was really a hand of God, I can say. And when I moved to Scotland, my sister lives in London. She invited me to UK, and then we were in a process of how I can get settled in that nation. And, and in the meantime, I moved to Scotland, and I started working in a place uh, called Elgin City. It's near Inverness. And, and, and I was very happy to get the job. I was well paid, but I was not happy that people whom I am working with are from another religious background, which I really hated, and I are from my neighboring country. When I was a young boy, I saw all the things happening between our country and that country, and I used to get angry, and sometimes I thought maybe I'll join Indian Army one day and I'll take some revenge. I had so much hatred in, in my heart against that nation. And now here I ended up working with that pe those people and working under them because my boss was from that country and from the religion that I really hated. And that hatred started increasing in my life day by day. Our, I started having sleepless nights because I was so bitter in my heart. And also we used to watch, we had our own rooms, but there was one common room that everyone who was working there, we had only one TV to watch in the living room. And then we'll listen to the news happening between both nations and then we'll have argument, your nation is this and they'll say your nation is this. That made me so bitter, I started having sleepless nights. I really started struggling. But one day there was one Christian boy, he invited me to the church, he became a good friend of mine. And he somehow invited me to church. He said, I didn't want to invite you because I thought you will create some mess when you go to the church. And knowing that what kind of guy I am. And, but anyway, he invited me. I went to the church, heard the, about the love of God, uh, heard the, that Jesus said, forgive your enemies, do good to those who have done evil to you. And for me, this was really a new message. That how is it possible? How can I love my enemies? I said, and, and she shared about that Jesus, when he was on the cross, he said, Father, the, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. I heard about that Jesus said, I came to save sinners. That really touched my heart. And when the meeting got over, some people were coming to hug me because I was new there. And anyway, that's how people meet. I ran outside. I said, no, they are holy people. I am a evil person. I am full of bitterness and hatred. Why I have come to this place? I don't deserve to be here. I went outside. There was a, a big park, and I was just uh, walking outside. And somehow, you know, it was so supernatural that for one hour, I started seeing my life in the sky, my past life, how I was so bitter, and the mistakes that I have made in my life. And then after one hour, my friend came looking to, for me. He said, where were you? I said, no, I just came outside. That evening, I went back to my workplace. My boss from that neighboring country was standing in front of me. 
and I heard the voice of God. And I knew that this is same God, that church God, where I went. And that voice said, you hated these people. Go and ask forgiveness from them. I said, I'm from a Sikh family background. I'm from India. I'm a bigger nation than them. You know, I'm not going to bow down. I never bow down even before my principal or my teachers. And you're asking me to do that. That, that conversation was inside my heart, inside my mind. And but after five minutes, I felt the love of God coming over me. And tears started coming out from my eyes. And I don't know what happened. I straight went to my boss. I said, boss, you're from this nation. I'm from this nation. You're from this religion. I am from this religion. Because of this, I hated you. Please forgive me. I went to each and every person in that place asking for forgiveness and crying. That night, when I went back to bed, I had the best sleep of my life. <laughs> I was so free. I really started knowing even, I was not saved that time. But I started knowing the power of forgiveness. That how forgiveness releases the power of God because before going to bed that night, we danced together and we had a party together and my Christian friend was sitting in the corner and he was looking at me and looking at them and they were kissing me and hugging me and after everything got over, he said, I cannot understand. How, how can they hug you like that? You were fighting till yesterday. I said, I don't know. You know, but your God, I can feel his love around me. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you can do better for God. And next morning, I was back in my workplace. I was so happy, so joyful. I said, wow, you know, I will stay with these people. I'll, I am just in love with these people. People I hated the most, I started loving them. And I was not a Christian yet. I was not born again. I was not a Christian yet. But I want to tell you, the reason I'm standing here is because that day, I decided to obey God. I decided to let go of bitterness and pain that hurts that I have received from people, even my father, or even from a neighboring nation or whatever, or the community or my school friends, whatever. I decided to let go and forgive them. That is the message of the New Testament gospel. It's not that, Father, forgive me because I forgave others. Colossians chapter 3 verse 13 says, Even as Christ forgave me, I, have, I forgive you. That is the message of New Testament gospel. That is the power of forgiveness and power of love. How it's transformed my life. After a few days, one pastor came to my room. Uh, anyway, I wanted to share something else, but Pastor Dave said that, you have a lot of time. So I have another meeting at five. <laughs> so the longest I preached was seven hours. No one moved. God was in the house. <laughs> so don't worry. <laughs> I'm not going to take that long, but I wanted to speak something else, but I don't know why as I stood here, maybe God wanted, wants me to minister his love. Maybe he wants to set some people free. Few days back, after a few days, one pastor came to my friend's room. He said, I have a pastor, he, 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 come and see, meet him. I had no idea what pastor is. I heard that word for the first time in my life. And he prayed for me, there were some problems happening back home and, and he said, do you have any prayer requests? And I said, yeah, I have this problem back home. He said, oh, I'll pray for you. And he prayed and I could sense such a release coming over me, I felt so light. In the evening, I received a phone call back from India, and they said, the problem that was happening is sorted. I said, this God is not only love, but He is powerful. For Him, all things are possible. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> After a few days, that same pastor invited me to his house, and he opened the Bible, 
took me his, to his prayer room, opened the Bible, started sharing about Jesus. And all the questions that I had since when I was 13 years old, I had so many questions. Because when I was 13, my grandmother passed away. We went for her funeral service, for her cremation, as her body was getting burnt in the, the fire. That was such a fearful experience for me because that was the closest death I have ever seen. And as I was sitting there, something happened to me. And I went years ahead of my life. I'm sitting there. It was not imagination. It was very real. And I saw some people bringing a dead body. And when I zoomed in, I saw that dead body was me. I came back to my senses. I was so afraid. My heart started beating because I knew, I, I, before that, I knew that one day I will die. But that day, that became so real for me. I said, man, what if there is another death waiting for me after this death? I was a very naughty boy when I was young. My uh, old three sisters got married when I was 12 years old. I was the only brother. And uh, they tried to crack me using different tricks. So one of the tricks they tried was, you know, one day you will die. And then God will throw you in boiling oil. And then they will make your pakoras. I don't know if you know pakoras, but if I say in English version or American version, it's KFC. You put the chicken piece. <laughs> So that's what they used to tell me. But I never bothered. But that day, the words they spoke started ringing in my ears. I was not able to sleep that night because I saw in some movies that how some people, while they are, die, they are sleeping, they die. And next morning, uh, daughter is saying, Mom, get up, Mom, get up, Mom is dead. And I said, man, people die. You don't have to wait for an accident to die or for someone to get old. People die when they are sleeping. I was so afraid. I said, what if I die while I'm sleeping and end up in that hot burning oil? I started living in fear of death and that led me in search of God, in search of way, truth, and any way by which I can be saved. I tried so many religions and, I, and when I turned 18, I was so confused after studying about so many religions. The only thing I never went to was Christ Jesus. Because God of this world has blinded the, had blinded the eyes, my eyes by, you know, I was blind. I never thought about going to Christ and checking in the Bible and going and meeting some Christian. And then I became an atheist. Actually, I was not. I pretended that I am atheist. And one day, I was going on my motorbike from one city to another city. As I was driving my bike, uh, I, I was wearing my helmet. I started crying like a baby. And I was crying. And I said, God, I know you exist. I know you created these birds and trees and everything that I can see with my eyes. And I also know I am a sinner. And I know one day you will throw me in that burning hot oil and you will punish me for my sins. But I have one request. I know as long as I'm alive in this world, I will never know you. Because I have a feeling no one knows you. I have requests when I die and when I stand before you, before throwing me in hell, please answer these three questions. What, who are you? First is, I want to know who are you. Second is, how and why you created heaven and earth. And third one is, what was the purpose of my life? Because I felt in my heart that there is a purpose for every person's life from God, which we don't know about. Even many people I've seen in Christendom, they, they, they think that they, yeah, Christ will come and one day he will take them back to heaven. But that is not the only purpose God has for your life. His kingdom on this earth. Amen. That is the purpose of God. Glory of God will be revealed. The whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of God's glory of who he is. That is what he is about to do. 
I want to read one verse from the Bible. I have maybe six and a half hours more. <laughs> Genesis chapter 6, oh sorry, Genesis chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. And this is a prophecy. The Lord God said to serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. Verse 15. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall, in other versions it said, your seed. And he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So this is a prophecy. And Satan knew that this is what God has spoken. And do you know, sometimes Satan believes God more than us. That's why he's so scared and afraid. And when he heard this prophecy, since that day, his heart is beating very fast. His, he knows his time is very short. Since that day, he tried so many things. So many things. When the woman received that prophecy, after that we know that Adam and Eve, they had other sons and daughters beside Seth and Cain and Abel. And but in chapter 4, we just read about Cain and Abel and how a brother murdered his brother because Satan is the murderer from the beginning. He was so disturbed by hearing this prophecy that his head will be crushed one day. And he said, I will not let this man to live on this earth. He decided, either I'll finish this man or I will corrupt this man so that the holy seed will never come and my head will never be crushed. When he saw the righteous Abel, Worshipping God with a true heart, the way God wanted him to worship him, he was not pleased. And he used his brother, the unrighteous Cain, to kill his own brother. So that no righteous seed shall remain. Then Bible says, they had other brothers and sisters. Adam had other sons and daughters. And the man increased on this earth and multiplied. And wickedness increased. Genesis chapter 6 talks about sons of God saw the daughters of man and got married with them. And God was not pleased with that marriage. Man started getting corrupted on this earth. And giants were born through them. And all the thoughts in their heart were wicked. Wickedness, wickedness. There was no good in their heart. Today we, you can see people, maybe they'll be committing adultery, living out with someone outside marriage and they think it's okay. But maybe they will see a, a dog walking on the street and hurt and maybe they'll feel, oh, I have pity on that dog. Maybe, you know, there is some good in their heart and some evil. But those, day, those days, everything was evil and wickedness. And God said, I will destroy man from this earth, but I will save righteous Noah and his family. And God had to destroy everything. And enemy thought, the seed, only one more family to go. One more family to go. If I can get that family, that seed will never be born and my head will never be crushed. You have to understand why all that happened with Israel, there was a reason. Why Satan tried to trick the people of Israel, there was a reason. Yes, it's his nature, but there was something more because he knew the prophecy and he said, I will never let this prophecy come to pass. He tried his level best. And God saved Noah and his family. 
and then the children were born through them. And one day God spoke with Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. And Abraham, and later called Abraham, and he said, you know, I'll build a nation through you. And there was again a promise of a child. Enemy knew it. He zoomed in. He said, oh, now I know. So I don't have to worry about other nations. I don't have to worry about other people. This is Abraham. I have to destroy him. But God protected him. And there was a promise of child. But Satan, the evil deceiver, was again able to deceive Sarah. And Abraham kind of fell in what the wife said and slept with the servant. And Ishmael was born. But again, still he kept on believing because Bible says he believed till the end. But Mary, uh, but Sarah was not able to conceive. Her womb was closed. God Almighty himself had to come and speak a prophecy of child being born next year. Enemy said, I will keep you barren. I'll make you sure that you will never have a child. But God came, the word was released over her. And Abraham believed. And Sarah gave birth to Isaac. Enemy thought, oh, if I can kill Isaac, game over. And one day God asked Abraham, go and sacrifice your son. And Abraham was willing to obey God. And he went and he believed that God is able to raise the dead. He has promised me, this is a promised child of God. He'll be resurrected again. And he was so happy. And we thought, oh yeah, now God himself is making Abraham to do that. And he was waiting and waiting and waiting. But in the end, God said, don't touch this child. I know Abraham, you are a righteous man. You obeyed me. And that's why I will bless you. It was not God trying to kill Isaac, actually God was trying to kill Abraham. He wanted him to bear much fruit. There was a plan of God. And he was willing to obey God. And then people of Israel started increasing on the earth. And then Jacob was born. And then uh, children were born to him. And now they ended up in Egypt. And enemy said, I will not let these people live. Kill the babies. Kill the babies. That's what he's trying to do even nowadays. Kill the babies. It's the hand of God. It's not any government or any people group. Enemy. It's Satan. The murderer. And they order. They said, kill the babies. Kill them. King was so afraid. Do you know Satan rules through people in this world? He was ruling through Pharaoh in Egypt and, and made the people of Israel the bond servants and made them to work. They lived in slavery. But one day God raised up one Moses. He said, go and deliver my people. He had an encounter with God. Face to face encounter with God. Many people, they don't have any experience with God. You must have experience with God. That will change the way you look at things. After having encounter with God, Moses went and delivered people of Israel out from Egypt. And they, could, they were able to cross the Red Sea. And now they were in wilderness. And remember, Satan was still there. He was able to deceive many. He said, I will make them to sin. I'll make them to commit adultery and fornication. I'll make them to make an idol. Idol can be anything. Even money can be idol. Even work can become idol. So he said, I will make them to make an idol. So God will be angry. And he himself will destroy them because of their sin. God had to wait 40 long years. For many of them to die. So that he can raise up a new generation. 
people who will be willing to pay a price. Because that generation, all they were looking was miracles every day, manna falling from heaven every day. That was a generation that really saw miracles, but still their life was not changed. They saw so many miracles. Imagine you crossing Red Sea, water on both sides. Imagine the, the level of that miracle. Manna from heaven every day. Pillar of fire. Cloud every day. They were living in supernatural. But still they, were, they never committed their life to God and trust Him. Even after seeing so many miracles. But Joshua and Caleb, from that old generation, they said, we believe, we trust God that we will finish those, those Canaanites, those giants you are talking about. And then they crossed the Jordan. They took the land. People of Israel started mul multiplying. But enemy was always looking for a room that somehow the people of God will give him room by committing adultery, by living unholy lives, by dedicating their lives to Baals and Asherahs and other gods of the lands around them. And many times they were destroyed because of their sin. Enemy was always after the people of Israel because he knew the prophecy. He knew the prophecy, why he was after them all the time. Because Satan knew the prophecy. When God was speaking to Abraham, he zoomed him. He knew this is the generation that I have to destroy. If I am able to destroy this generation, that's it. Then prophecy will never come to pass. That's why Daniel was thrown in lion's den. That's why Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they were thrown in fiery furnace. That's why their faith was tested. That's why they went through so many hardships. Even because of their disobedience, enemy knew if they disobey God, the curse will come upon them because of the law. But after thousands of years, Christ Jesus was born. And when he was born, enemy again tried to kill him and so many babies were killed he again tried to kill him he said no this shall never happen that prophecy shall never come to pass but Joseph and Mary led by the spirit of God and the angel of God led them into another land and then Christ Jesus grew up in favor with God and man and he preached the gospel, he shared the good news, healed the sick, raised the dead. And then he said, I will die, but on the third day I will be raised from the dead. Enemy thought, Satan thought, who will be raised from the dead? When he was on the cross, Satan was so happy. He said, yeah, now you're going to die. And then he died and Satan was so happy. And third day again, he was raised from the dead. Bible talks about Jesus disarmed principalities and powers. The weapon that enemy had against us was destroyed completely. And that one weapon was law. Jesus fulfilled the law. So the accuser of brethren will not be able to accuse us anymore so that we can always come boldly to the throne of God and say, Father, please forgive me. Amen. That's why we have hope to arise again. Bible says, let God arise, his enemies be scattered. And Bible also says, arise, shine, for your light has come. God will arise through you. Then Christ was defeated. Uh, sorry, Satan was defeated by Christ. And he, raised, he was raised from the dead the third day. And then we see he said, go and preach gospel in all the world. Still Satan was there. He was still there. And, you know, we may be wondering, 
then what about the prophecy? What about the prophecy? Why he's still there? You know, you want to know why he's still there? Because there is something that Bible says. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. Romans chapter 16 and verse 20 says, The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. We thought the prophecy is about Christ. No, it's about his body. The feet, his body, his body, his feet will crush Satan. And that's why Satan is after this generation. He knows his time is short. He can sense that these are the last days. He knows. So that's why he is once again trying his level best to corrupt the body of Christ. So that people of God will take grace of God lightly and say, oh yeah, it's the grace of God, it's okay to sin. But do you know what Paul said? He said, Romans chapter 6, if you are dead, how can you live in sin? Because when Christ died, we died with him. When he was raised from the dead, we were raised with him. We were raised by the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. We are not weak anymore. We are born with a new seed. And that seed is the Holy Spirit, the word of God, by which we have received new, new birth. And this is the same word that created this whole universe. And through that same word, now we are born again. We are walking in the resurrection power of God. But all enemy is trying to do, he's trying to cover it. So that we'll always think like, oh, I'm so weak. I cannot overcome this sin. Oh Lord, I am just a man. I am from, from dust. You are not from dust. You are from heaven. Few years back, I took my wife to Scotland. We landed in Aberdeen Airport. Pastor Andrew came and picked us up. We went straight to the restaurant. We had nice lunch. And while sitting there, he asked about my wife because that was the first time Ritu was meeting him. And he knew where she's from, but he asked the question, where are you from? She said, I'm from India. No, no, you don't look like. No, no, she said, I'm from India. I said, no, pastor, actually, she is from a Nepali background, but born in India. No, 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 you're lying. You're still lying. I said, what is he trying to say? Because that same thing he used to ask me, where are you from? I said, pastor, you know, I'm from India. And then he said, is not Bible saying we are from heaven? We are a new creation. All things passed away. And my eyes opened. Oh man, we are seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Amen. We have a new identity. We are not that weak person anymore. You know what Jesus said? Anyone born by God is greater than John the Baptist who is called the greatest prophet. The new identity, Old Testament people were the servants of God. Abraham was the servant of God. Jacob was the servant of God. Daniel was the servant of God. We are the sons of God. Amen. Born again by that seed that came down from heaven. And we died and we were raised up by that same seed that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. So we have that same power working in us. So that means you have ability and power of God that works in them through your life so that wherever you see dead situation, you will see life. When you speak, you will see life. I love going to places where nothing is happening. For me, if I am in one place where, you know, because that's, because of my calls, when I see, okay, everything settled down, and then I'll say, wow, now at least, now I can rest. And then Lord says, move from here. Give it to someone else. And move to that place. So that is because of my grace, my call. But, but, but I know one thing, that I have resurrection Christ of God working in me. Doesn't matter how hard people are, but I, I believe in Christ, he is able to raise people from the dead. Amen. 
and I'm not just talking about physical death. I am talking about spiritual death. We all were spiritually dead, but one day we were born again by the seed of God. Amen. So that resurrection power of Christ is in you. You are the carrier of that resurrection power. You have that power that raised Lazarus from the dead. You have that power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. You have that power that, made the, that healed the sick. You have that a power that dried uh, the Red Sea. The same power we have in us. So that means it doesn't matter how hard the situation looks like. God is able to turn it around through you if you believe. Hallelujah. Just give the Lord a clap offering if you believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For me, even as I was sharing yesterday, I'm not much educated. I wanted to go for theological studies because someone said, if you are called to preach the gospel around the nation of the world, you must go to Bible college. So I said, Lord, I want to go to Bible college. I want to have a degree because I don't have any degree. I cleared my 10th year with the help of my teachers because they wanted me to get out my school. So when exam exams were happening, they passed on some slips. They said, give it to him. We want him out. I'm, t I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating. I'm telling you the truth. My teachers were so, so mad at me. But, you know, they were so upset because of the things that I was doing in the school. I went to the college. I looked for the worst college the college that is so flexible, no studies, nothing at all, so that I can have flexibility. So I went to one college in the 11th, 11th year. Uh, and uh, so I attended three and a half periods in one month. And the fourth period, I, I asked the teacher, I said, can I go for Lou? He said, OK, come back soon. After that, I never went back to my classroom. Look, see, now here I am. And I don't know, maybe that teacher may be thinking, where did that guy disappear? <laughs> so I don't have any education background. I don't have any theological background. But all I had is God revealed his heart to me. All I had was the encounter with Jesus Christ that turned my life and knowing the love of God and experiencing the power of forgiveness that changed everything in my life. Many people, they keep on living in bitterness because they had some very hard past. Look at the life of Joseph, what his brother did to him. They tried to kill him. Imagine, we may be thinking, oh, that brother said this to me. My husband said this to me. My wife did that to me. But look at Joseph. His brother planned to kill him. Then they uh, threw him in the ditch. Then they sold him as a slave. Then he went... Then he was taken to Egypt and then he ended up in prison. And imagine enemies speaking to him. All that has happened to you is because of your brothers. All that is happening to you is because of them, your father or your mother. Yes, they made my life terrible. I am broken because of them. But look at Joseph. He was never bitter. He was not. He became, actually he became a blessing for his family. And he had no bitterness against his brother. So he was willing to forgive and accept them back in his arms. That's why he could see the prophecy coming to pass. Remember one thing. Personal prophecy is conditional. And enemy will try all things in your life to somehow make it sure that prophecy will never come to pass so that like King Saul, did you will be destroyed and then God let God look for someone else. But I'll not let you to do what God has called you to do. It's conditional. And one of the area he tries to attack you is bitterness because he knows if you become bitter, the love of God will not flow through your life and you will not be able to impact anyone. That's how he is killing God's people. So I want to tell you today, you have the resurrection power of Christ working in you and is ready to walk through you. But I want to ask you, are you carrying any bitterness in your heart? 
You may have a yeah, really tough life and maybe because of some people, your, maybe your parents, your brothers, sisters, someone, you may be saying, I am like this because of them. But today you can make a choice to come out of it and say, Lord, I am going to walk in love. This, this hatred and this bitterness is not going to keep me in prison. I have decided to come out of it. I have decided to forgive and forget Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Some say it's not possible. It's possible for God. His love will come over you, will touch you. Will touch. That's what happened to me. You know, before I became a Christian, I experienced His love. And it was overwhelming. It was something I had never experienced in my life. And same love wants to touch you today. And maybe today there are people, there may be people in your life, they may have hurt you, but today is a day of decision. When we decide to move forward and say no to our past and decide to forgive, you may not forget, but God is able to take away the pain if you choose today. Your choices matter. They will lead you to your destiny if you make right choices in your life. Shall we arise on our feet? Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We worship you. Lord, we are that generation. Heaven is waiting on us and we are waiting on heaven and actually heaven is waiting on us that Holy Spirit is always already here on this earth. And we are saying, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit. He said, it's already there. Because 2,000 years ago, nearly 2,000 years ago, Acts chapter 2, Holy Spirit came down. And it's still on this earth, moving and hovering over this earth. That is there anyone who is willing, who will open their heart, say, here I am, Lord, take my life and use me. He is, even we read in Genesis chapter 1, how earth became void and formless and the Spirit of God was hovering, ready for a new creation, really ready to bring things back in order. So is the Spirit of, of God here today in this place and He is ready to heal your heart. He is, he is ready to help you to bring your life in order. Because we are living in the last days. We are that generation. Satan is going to use this church, the end time church, to crush Satan. And we are just waiting, Lord, take us away. It's so hard. It's so hard, Lord. That's what I started praying when I gave my life to the Lord. He said, go back to India. I went through so much, so many things for two years. And I, I, I said, Lord, oh, please take me, Jesus. I love you so much. Come today, come today, come today. And one day he opened my eyes. He said, you are so selfish. Because you are thinking about your pain all the time. Oh, I am in pain. I'm Yes, I was in pain. But Lord taught me to take my eyes off from my pain. And he said, look at their pain. And when God healed and touched their life, I felt such a joy. I said, wow, by them getting healed, I am being healed. One night I had a dream. And that day I was really broken. Nearly all the money was gone. Even the cook who was preparing my cook, he said he's a believer, came to help me because I was eating from outside. And he came and, and he said, okay, I'll cook food for you. He ran with money, with some of my money. He ran away. My heart was so broken. Lord, I said, whom can I trust? I was so broken that night. I was sleeping and I had a dream. And in the dream, I, I heard someone knocking my door. And I went and opened my door. And here was Jesus standing there. He said, can I come in? I said, Jesus, of course. This is your house. Please come in. He came inside. And he stretched his right hand. And he said, son, give me your heart. 
I took my heart out and I gave it to Jesus. It was all broken in so many pieces. And he took my heart. And then again his hand came back with a new heart. Golden, shining heart. He said, son, take, I give you a new heart today. I put it back there. Dream ended. Next morning, when I got up, I had no pain. No emotional pain. No pain of because what I went through. That day, Jesus really healed my heart. And same Jesus wants to heal you. If you just decide, Lord, here I am. I let go of bitterness. I let go of everything in my life. I let go of sin. And Lord, not only that, that today you will touch me and I, 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 I choose to forgive. But Lord, today I decided to be raised up by you. And I want the resurrection power of Jesus Christ to work through me so that many lives can be touched and changed by me. Do not waste this power. It's in you. You have it. It's with you. Christ Jesus is ready to move through you. I don't have any degrees. I don't have any qualifications. But all I have is Holy Spirit that uses me. And same Holy Spirit you have is willing to use you, change you, touch you, and make you a blessing. Let me read one last verse. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Hallelujah. Now the Lord said to Abram, verse 1, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your kindred, and your father's house to the land I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Through Christ Jesus, this blessing is for every one of you. Great name, you will be blessed, and not only that, he wants you to be a blessing. Close your eyes. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We honor you. We praise you. Hallelujah. If there is anyone who has hurt you in your life, can be your father, your mother, your brothers, sisters, maybe someone in the church, because Jesus said that, yeah, as long as in this world, yeah, there will be people always who will hurt us, or trouble us or because the world is fallen many people are still living in that old sinful nature that's why sometimes we go through brokenness sometimes people do wrong to us but if you today decide and choose to let go of your past and say father father i have decided because you forgave me i have decided i will also forgive Knowing how a great sinner I was, you forgive me, Lord. Who am I to hold my brother or sister or mother or father guilty even today in my heart? I'm not going to carry this bitterness anymore. Lord, I am going to let go. If there is anyone, I want you to come forward. God is here in this house. He wants to heal you and touch you. He wants to set you free because you are going to lay that bitterness down today at the foot of the cross and you're saying, Lord, I'm not going to carry it anymore. Even if you have to make a phone call today, just make a phone call and say, I forgive you. I forgive you. We conducted one school in one part of India, state called Andhra Pradesh. I shared about the love of the Father and, you know, uh, and forgiveness. Many students in that school started calling their parents. Then we had the graduation day. That was only for students. But some of those students said, our parents want to come. Sometimes we allow them. And we said, fine. And the graduation day turned into another day. It was a family healing and coming together day. Many, many students. And they said, oh, we thank God for this, what you have taught them. Because they called us and, and said, we forgive you. And we forgive you. Maybe today you have to take that decision. Maybe call people when you go out from here. Do not... Just be the hearers of the word. Be doers of the word. Maybe you have to, you know, uh, maybe, yeah, you may not be in a position to trust them. But at least you can forgive them. And say, I forgive you. And maybe you have to ask forgiveness from someone. Yeah, please do it right today. 
Because we are not going to see tomorrow, we, we are not going to carry this bitterness into our tomorrow. This anger or whatever hatred we are carrying because God has a plan for your lives. Because the resurrection power of Christ wants to move through you. Bible says, do not quench the Holy Spirit. So we are not going to quench it. Holy Spirit, we're not going to say, Lord, Holy Spirit, we're not going to let you move through our lives. If you just let go of that, you will be divinely led by the Spirit of God throughout the days of your life. If you really want to experience that, it's important. And not only it's important because of that, because you know your Heavenly Father, He is love. And the way He forgave you, today you are deciding to forgive. Father, we worship. Just spend time with God. Talk with God. This is a time between you and your heavenly Father. Thank you for forgiving me, Father. The way you forgave me, I choose to forgive today. Lord, take away all the bitterness. I'm not going to carry it in my tomorrow. Because my tomorrow is waiting for me with greater blessings. God has a plan for my life. I am that generation, that person... I'll be a blessing. I am going to move in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. We love you. Lord, Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you, we love you, Lord. Jesus, you first loved me. We choose to walk in love. Lord, today will you touch the heart and lives of your people. No more bitterness. We know the power of forgiveness. How the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, and you forgave her completely. You forgave her completely and you said, now go and sin no more. We see the power of forgiveness, how the forgiveness released upon that lady's life, turned her life completely. We see so many people who are sinners in the Bible, how when they received the forgiveness of Christ, their life completely changed. This is the power of forgiveness. When you speak it over other people's life, their lives will be changed. They'll be touched by the power of God. That will shock them. That will make them thinking, how is it possible? What is that? Do people really do it even now in this world that it's lost? Yes. There are people who have decided to arise and become a light unto this nation and nations of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of this world. And then he told his people, you are the light of this world. He said, you are the salt of this earth. He's asking you to arise out of your poverty, out of your bitterness, out of your anger, out of your hatred, out of your sin. And He will hold your hand and He will lead you. That's what He wants to do in your life. Ministry team, can you please just lay your hand over them. God is setting them free. God is setting them free. You are going back as a free man, a free woman, a free person. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you, Jesus, we worship you, we love you, Lord, we love you, Lord, pour out your spirit upon your people, Lord, pour out your spirit, touch each and every life, each and every life, each and every life, Lord, heal them, heal their lives, heal their heart. Heal them completely, Master. And may they rise up as a new man, as a new woman. Moving and walking in the resurrection power of Christ. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you for touching them. Lord is touching you right now. I can see few people crying. It's okay to cry. You are at the foot of the cross and Jesus Christ is healing you. He's touching you. He's helping you. He's loving you. He says, I know what you went through. It's very real. I also went through it. I was also mocked. I was beaten. 
they pulled, tried to pull off my beard, they spit at me, they tore my clothes, they nailed me on the cross, they laughed at me, they said, I am Satan. They said, I do this with the help of Belzebub. Yeah, even my family members thought that I am out of my mind. I know what you are going through because I am a high priest who knows how it feels like because he went through the same. And today, he's here to comfort you with the same comfort by which he was comforted. Worship you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Heal your people, Lord. Touch your people. You have a plan for their life. They are that generation. We'll crush Satan underneath our feet. The body of Christ is arising in these last days. Is arising in these last days. Is arising in these last days. As long as Jesus is on the throne, we are not afraid. Great king, king of this universe is sitting on the throne. At the right side of hand of God, interceding for us, for his church, that the church will arise and the enemies will be scattered. When church arises, demons will be scattered. When church arises, Lies of the enemy will be scattered. The nation will rise up in righteousness. If God can use one person, Moses, imagine how many we are. And that was Old Testament. Now we are living in the New Testament. We don't carry the ark of God on our shoulders anymore. Now we are the ark of covenant. Now the spirit of God lives in us dwells in us. We are the temple of Holy Spirit. And God Almighty now lives in us. And not only that, Bible says, eternity is in us. Worship you. Father, thank you. Thank you. We worship you. We honor you. Hallelujah. Thank you for these people. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for what you are going to do. It's not by power, it's by, not by might, it's by your Holy Spirit, Father, that you are able to, you are able. Remember how God used Joseph and how what all the, he went through. And you may be someone saying, yeah, I also went through the same. He's a God of restoration. He's a God of restoration. He wants to restore you. He restored Job. He restored David back to his throne that was given to him by God. He is able to restore your lives. Nothing is lost. Because when it returns, it returns manifold. He is a God who turns our sorrows into dancing. Sun is rising for you. There is a new day waiting for you. Father, I thank you. I know you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask, think, or imagine. I thank you for your people. I thank you for these lives. I thank you for this church, for this community, for Yuba City, for this land. People who are praying, I thank you for the names that are there in that box. We believe for their lives. We believe that a mighty revival will spread throughout this place into the nations of the world. They have been blessings for the nations. But let, that they, let them become hundredfold more a reason of blessing for the nations of the world. Hundredfold more, Master. We thank you. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your touch. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory and honor for all that you have done in our lives. This day, this morning, we are going back a changed person. We are going back being set free by the love of Jesus Christ. We are going back knowing the resurrection power of Christ that raised Jesus from the dead is in me and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can overcome sin. I can overcome any evil that comes in front of me 
and i have the ability given to me by god to be a blessing for nations because he lives in me paul said i have been crucified with christ it's no longer i who live but christ lives in me so remember it's christ it's not you it's christ the new life that we live in this flesh is by faith in the son of god who gave himself for our sins died and resurrected on the third day and still alive living in and through us yeah. father we thank you for this time thank you for your people thank you for this church for the house of god thank you for pastor dave and cheryl and all the leaders who are help a great blessing in this place i pray that they may they increase many 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 fold and be a greater blessing in the coming days in jesus name amen mm -hmm.